Mankind's minds have always been full of questions, like, are we alone in the universe? What happens after we die? Is the sea salty because the shore never waves back? Who milked the first cow and what was their deal? And of course, what do you get when you make a game where you can create a watermelon waterfall and then roleplay as Arnold from the Magic School Bus immediately after? Well, good friends, the answer is- Starfield. Starfield, Starfield. Starfield, 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 Starfield. And since its release, I haven't seen people so divided since the great left versus right Twix debate. Which brings us to mankind's greatest question. Is Starfield a good game? The great rule of cinema, however, is to show, don't tell. So to answer that, we'll be following the story of today's protagonist, Polygon Picklesworth. A simple miner making a simple living, surrounded by simply rude people that Polygon's hair testified he was better than. I right, hear this is the last dig. What's wrong with you? Hey, watch it! Glad when we're off this rock. He had had enough until one fateful day he found something that would change his life forever. Polygon, noticing the floating cubes, correctly assumed that he was on drugs and had found the purest natural source of rare solid ketamine. Naturally, in this state, he attempted to use it, promptly resulting in a trip so intense he lost his job so hard that he got promoted to member of the Pure Ketamine Finders Club, nicknamed Constellation. There, he met a new co-worker that secretly despised him, named Sarah. Now, Polygon's parents had always taught him not to trust lawbreakers, and Sarah didn't obey the laws of physics at all which deepened his growing mistrust of her. But being a proud member of the Picklesworth family, he decided to accept their task to find their lost friend named Barrett, who Polygon mistakenly hoped would have a giant gun arm. While Polygon wished he was listening to Starman by David Bowie, his ship was hailed by a friendly spaceman who warned him not to play Assassin's Creed because it had lost its steam years ago. Polygon thanked him for the warning, and like all gamer advice, immediately ignored him. Once planetside, the newly appointed Captain Picklesworth learned that a cowboy who couldn't stop showing off had brought a child onto his ship against his will. He took a mental note to prepare his defense against the inevitable child endangerment charge he'd face if he ever got pulled over by the space cops. He suspected the cowboy was trying to commit insurance fraud, so he joined Sarah in Polygon's new No Trust Naughty list. Since Barrett had only been kidnapped a bit ago, Polygon had plenty of time to stop by his old workplace to gloat to his old boss, who he might have abandoned in a firefight a few days ago. Or he quit. Or he was fired. To be honest, he couldn't remember due to being drugged up the wazoo at the time, but regardless, she was ecstatic to see him. Oh no, don't start. She told him the happy news that everyone there had been murdered by pirates, which made him so ecstatic he finally decided to be honest and truthful. Are you joking? Or are you just a coward? So he decided to never tell the truth again. He also decided to tell Sarah to wait, and then took off and left her behind for being so insensitive. Remarkably, Sarah had prepared for this, and like Hugh Jackman from the movie The Prestige, had a clone ready to take her place on the ship. Thwarted, he asked his most well-rounded, loyal, intelligent, and driven companion to accompany him. He had only just met him a few days ago, but he could tell he had his priorities straight. Do you have an academy where fans can practice uh, groveling at your feet? If not, I can start one! After getting his daily amount of cardio on planet Ubisoft, Polygon miraculously ran into one of his old minor co-workers named Heller. Polygon accurately pointed out he didn't need a filibuster from him, so Heller tried to guilt trip him. Yeah, you know, you're really the one who should be upset about all this. Me, laying here, half-conscious, real inconvenience. He was an inconvenience, and also a bigger liar than Jim Carrey in the movie Liar Liar, because he revealed he was faking his injury the whole time. It was at this moment Polygon vowed to never trust an injured man again. Shortly after, he met a woman who offered him money to go find people he could use this new skill on. Excited to tell his therapist he was trying new things like they talked about, he realized he was a natural born killer. All he had to do was imagine his enemies were Sarah. Believing he was the son of John Wick and Wolverine, he charged into a building and was promptly riddled with bullet holes until he died. Miraculously, he got up, and believing he was the son of John Wick and Wolverine, he committed a minor genocide. He found some doctors and security guards in hiding who didn't bother helping Polygon clear the building. So he did some research with them and found out they were bulletproof, proving that they could have made his fight much easier. Moving on, he encountered a man who radiated raw anime protagonist energy, who he tried to shoot. But overestimating how many bullets he'd need to take down a weeb, he heroically retreated and was swiftly shot in the back of the head. However, the anime god smiled upon his anime arc and brought him back so he could murder the remaining spacers. On the next floor, he ran into two adrenaline junkies in a toxic friendship, who liked to live life on the edge by pointing their guns at each other for no reason whatsoever. The like scientists said, here are good people. Someone's been taking out the spacers. Every one of them that died is a loss for all of us. I... I don't believe it. Are they all... gone? 
Thanks to the stranger. Polygon was bored and poor, and money talks, so he helped kill the remaining spacers. I can't see <laughs> Further convincing Polygon that the Geneva Convention was just a suggestion, and then he killed more people for them. And some more. And more. It crossed Polygon's mind that he had never killed a man until two days ago, and now he couldn't remember how many he had killed, but he brushed off the thought. He reasoned at least he wasn't as bad as the monster who decided the fear of long words should be called hippopotomonstrosesquipedaliophobia, a word I certainly didn't have to practice and ask Google how to pronounce. Pondering his morals reminded Polygon to think, which reminded him to remember that a child had been on board his ship this entire time, which he then chose to forget so that he could remember that Barrett had been kidnapped by pirates. What he didn't have to remember, though, was to subscribe. The words of Todd Howard brushed through his brain like Russell Crowe touching the wheat in Gladiator. You see that subscribe button? That's not just a backdrop. It is actually orbiting the planet. Yes, you can press it too. It has 16 times the detail, and it just works. Polygon had a sudden fear that he was having a stroke, but thankfully the feeling faded. He remembered he'd heard some pirates have tentacle beards, so he decided Barrett might be worth looking for after all. A few misadventures later, his crew stumbled upon a pirate base that they believed held Barrett captive. Curious to see if Sarah's clone was also bulletproof, he took her out to act as a human shield. They infiltrated the base, ready to eradicate any pirate that got in their way. And ladies and gentlemen, they got him. Holy shit. You actually found me. Is Constellation willing to pay ransom in exchange for this man's freedom? Asking for a ransom forced Polygon to do the only thing he could. Rip and tear them apart in an intellectual smackdown and convince them they were all friends. So they let Barrett go for free, while leaving out the detail that they had just finished massacring all of their pirate friends outside. Back in New Atlantis, Sarah's clone, fearing to get locked in the storage closet again, attempted to bribe Polygon into letting her stick around a while longer. He reluctantly agreed because his mind was on other things. The weight of blood on his hands was too much. He sought affirmation, so he decided it might do him good to see some people he hadn't seen in years. Mom and Pop Picklesworth. He got ready to see his parents like anyone would, by putting on his Sunday best to make sure they pitied him thoroughly. He wasn't sure how he could face them after killing so many. The weight of blood- What? Well, I'll be. After getting jump scared by his father's baldness, Polygon forgot what he was thinking about and began to wonder where he could have inherited his luscious locks from. Lost in the moment, he let slip that he was now working for the ketamine collectors. Constellation? Is this one of those candid camera vids? A joke? My child is a member of Constellation. I just knew you were special. Polygon sighed in relief when he remembered his parents were huge fans of the Big Lebowski and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, which clearly did a number on his mother's mind since she couldn't tell the difference between Polygon and Sarah's clone. I want you to consider this your home away from home. Your bed is always yours, no questions asked. I mean, well, I will ask questions, but you can stay here no matter the answers. Being satisfied with his praise, Polygon decided it wasn't important to let them know about the hundreds of people he had slaughtered that week. So, he picked up his faithful childhood companion, Sir Fluffigan, and took his leave. After quickly practicing his parkour on some local art, he met his parents at work. His parents had broken into his work. This place is everything I imagined. Do you know I dreamt of joining Constellation when I was a girl? At this moment, he concluded his parents might have a bigger problem with drugs than him. He didn't worry about it too much, though, because his father dubbed him the title of man and gifted him a gun. May I present to you Sir Malcolm Livingston's personal sidearm. Polygon was so overwhelmed with joy, he said the most heartwarming thing he could think of. Oh, that's a terrible joke. You are joking, right? Of course you are. Leaving to go talk with a space Russian in a cool-looking yet structurally questionable space station, Polygon was told where he could find more quote-unquote artifacts, as his fellow team members continuously advised him to call the space ketamine. He assumed they were just being paranoid about cops. Then Barrett decided the best time to talk about his feelings was in front of the space Russian. I just wanted to say thanks for the daring rescue back there. Which he did, by spamming the thumbs up emote and proceeding to talk about his dead husband. Polygon, uncomfortable dealing with emotion, landed on the first recreational artifacts location, Planet Pizza. Unfortunately, the locals had no intention of sharing their pizza. So naturally, they lost everything. Suddenly, an image of Polygon's father flashed through his mind. He was so happy to know how proud of him his parents were at this very moment. Suddenly, he was ambushed by another weeb who was ready to avenge the souls of his ancestors to become the greatest hero because of his belief in the heart of the car. By an act of God, or the ghost of Sub-Zero, the weeb was defeated, and Polygon took his weapon as a trophy. He felt a sudden urge to yell out the name of his attack as he plunged his blade into the heart of his enemies, but managed to resist. With Clan Pizzeria dead, Polygon took their most prized ingredient. 
He didn't remember the next few hours, but assumed it was quite the bender. After a few cups of coffee and a trip to space, they encountered a random tourist ship, looking for quality pizza and, of course, the invaluable opinion of Captain Picklesworth. Is being a ship captain non-stop thrills and excitement, like living in that movie Return of the Interceptor? This man was clearly a buffoon who could only deserve one answer. Oh, sorry. I, uh, think there was... He hoped the man had heard him, because this was the worst experience he'd had all day. You must be super well off. You single? This was the best experience he'd had all day. At the next artifact site, Barrett decided to tell a pun. Uh, it might seem like you can place a mine anywhere, but it depends on how minerals form and collect. <laughs> Polygon realized he did not like puns. Opening the mine, he was surprised to see a woman furiously shooting a dead body in a diabolical manner that went against any basic moral compass a human being could possess. Truly, it was the most disgusting type of overkill Polygon had ever laid eyes on. It was love at first sight. Don't come any closer. The feeling was mutual. Andresia, looking a little more murdery than usual. Polygon could tell they shared something special. By the end of a traditional murder spree date, she was already starting to come around. It is surprising to find someone else from Constellation who agrees with me. They pinky promised not to snitch on each other for killing all those dudes and then completely forgot what happened after. Back at the lodge, Polygon was daydreaming about how many watermelons he could manage to fit in his cockpit. Like just so many watermelons. A lifetime supply of watermelons. Watermelons for day. I do agree that we accomplished something together. He didn't have the faintest idea what they were talking about. Thankfully, Andresia mistaked his blank stare for mysterious silence, which she was into. Back in the space station that Polygon's intrusive thoughts said could be destroyed with a chisel, the space Russian revealed that their next destination was a large artifact. Polygon shrugged and figured it was code for the club's biggest recreational stash. Sir Fluffigan had found a new home on the dash of Captain Picklesworth's spaceship, which he chose to think about instead of the child that was still on board. On a planet that really liked the color cyan, Polygon walked around like an idiot for an obscene amount of time mostly looking at space jellyfish and binocular crabs, before running a marathon to find out that the large artifact was actually code for an ancient Jedi temple drug den. Entering the Valley of the Jedi, he found a spinning magnet show that let him chase around glowing sparkles floating in the sky. He was sure he'd never been this high before. As he touched the sparkles, the rings began to spin faster, so Andresia broke eight ribs and her arm for the sake of science. Finally, the rings aligned, and Polygon, desperate to be the center of attention, entered the center and pretended he was Space Jesus. Waking up outside, Polygon realized that that could have easily just killed him, and that he might be developing a gambling addiction. So to de-stress, he used his new superpowers. Wait, he had superpowers? I mean, yeah, apparently. That's not even in the script, what do you want me to say? I don't know, just make something up. As he practiced his newfound mastery of the Thum in front of the possibly now brain-damaged Andresia, he reasoned there were only a few explanations. One, he had just gotten so high that he unlocked his brain's third eye. Two, someone had injected him with Compound V while he was unconscious. Three, he was right and he should have gotten his Hogwarts acceptance letter all those years ago. Or four, it wasn't ketamine after all, but the drug from Limitless. He shrugged and figured it didn't matter as long as he had superpowers. So he soared off into the sky to immediately be ambushed by pirates looking to avenge their dead friends. So Polygon engaged and killed every last one of them, while thinking he was glad he chose to forget that a child was on board the entire time. Now, what morals can be gleaned from this story? I have, I have no clue. I, honestly, I have, I have no idea. But what I do know is that I've come to enjoy Starfield. I think it's pretty fun anyway. I mean, come on, it, it, it just works. <laughs>